Aloha, I'm Devin with TNC Surf. If your surfing ability ranges from average Joe to complete beginner, then we made this video just for you. I talk story with legendary surfboard shaper Glenn Pang about some of the biggest mistakes he sees when surfers are buying a new board. We cover topics such as important features to look out for when buying a board, as well as least important features, how your fitness level affects board selection, and we provide insight on factors related to fins and much, much more. Let's get started with two of the biggest mistakes surfers make when buying a surfboard. I think they're better than they are. <laughs> That's the biggest mistake. Oh, how good are you? Oh, I'm, I've been surfing like six months. I can, I'm surfing pipeline already. I was like, you're right. <laughs> no, <laughs> trying to go too small is like, um, probably like the biggest problem when guys are learning how to surf. Yeah, I want to get a short, high performance shortboard already. It's like, guys can't even paddle. You know, not catching waves, not having fun, not progressing. It's better to go bigger and work your way down than trying to go short and struggle. So it's better to go with a bigger board. So it, the board is pretty easy to paddle. You're not struggling paddling. That's probably like the main concern when you're buying a board when you're a beginner. If you're adding more volume, it should be a little wider, a little thicker, which will make the boards more stable. Overestimating your ability leads to buying too small of a board, which leads to not catching waves, which leads to less fun and therefore less progression in your surfing. So why are surfers overestimating their ability? Well, one of the reasons is they might not want to be labeled a kook out there in the lineup. This is what Glenn has to say to anybody thinking, I don't want to look like a kook out there. You probably will if you get a small board and you can't ride the short board, so it's better to get a bigger board and at least catch some waves than trying to ride the shortest board you think you can ride and not catch any waves. Which way is looking more of a kook? Before I continued my conversation with Glenn, I gave him three hypothetical surfers and asked him to give me his board recommendation as well as features that surfer should look out for when buying a surfboard. Also, I wanted to note, if you see a little video up here in the bottom left of your screen, that means we've already done an in-depth video on that topic. Whether it be a surfboard review or a surfboard subject, you can find a link for that little video in the description of this video. Let's get back to Glenn and the hypothetical surfers. Surfer number one, complete beginner looking to just get up and catch some of their first waves. Longboard. You know, something a little lower rocker, more volume board would be better for like a slower wave. Depending on what longboard they're getting, there are high performance longboards or like a low rocker town model longboard. I mean, longboards, you just get like a 9.0 and then you're good. Like depending on, unless the guy's like 350 or something, you know what I mean? Like the average longboard should work for pretty much majority of the people. Surfer number two, the average Joe who can get up and ride and is trying to progress their surfing a little bit. Average surfer, I get something with a fuller outline and a little lower rocker. So you can catch waves and go faster. <laughs> just because the boards have low rocker doesn't mean it's a beginner board. They're just made for smaller waves, you know, and they're riding the boards in smaller waves. Just if the guy's still kind of in the beginner stage, I would just kind of volume up a little bit so he can actually um, not struggle catching waves. More volume, it'll have more outline, more length or more thickness. Majority of the boards, uh, small wave boards are squash shells. Squash shells kind of don't sink as quick as a, um, a round pin or a round tail. It gives you a little bit more projection out instead of sinking so you can go straight up. Surfer number three, above average Joe. Someone who can get up and do some turns and is looking to maybe get barreled and do some high performance surfing. Yeah, then you want to go with something a little bit more high performance, like a CSU, which is based off of the Flux. A high performance model, a little bit more put in outline, a little bit more rocker. Thin placements set a little um, further back for bigger waves, like a round tail or thumb tail and everything else should fall into place depending on what kind of board you're getting. So the boards are made the way they are to work in the type of waves they're made for. How should a surfer progress through their boards? Usually like if someone's starting out, I would say get a long board. You know, if they're past the long board stage, then probably like a fun board like the bullet or like a mid-length board. And then from there, you can work your way down depending on skill level of the surfer. You could have a guy who's learning, but his skill level is still pretty high. Give him like a oversized board for their weight, like but a more on the performance short board type of board. What should dictate board selection? The waves you ride or the style you want to ride them? Both. I think it's both. So depending on how many boards you have too. So you got to see, okay, I'm going to buy one board. So you got to find something mid range. So if you have one board and you only surf small waves, it's easy. Get a small, small wave model, something with low rocker, flatter, fuller outline. But let's say I can only get one board, but I'm going to surf two foot waves to five foot waves. You kind of want something in the middle. 
right? If you can get two boards, then you can get a board that's gonna surf one to two foot waves and a board that's gonna surf three to four foot waves. So you can get two different boards. So you, first off, you gotta see how many boards you're gonna get. Like the good guys, they go like every couple inches because they can get like 10 boards or 12 boards or whatever, you know? The boards are suited like specifically for X kind of waves, you know? Does physical fitness matter when selecting a board? So depending on like what you consider in shape, meaning physical shape or surfing shape, because you can get guys who aren't the best physical shape, but guys can rip. You can get like 300 pounds. I saw like you get guys like 300 pound guys who can actually go straight up, you know what I mean? It's just because they can go, they're not the best physical shape doesn't mean they should be getting this type of board. Learning how to surf then, that's a different story. Just because you're in good physical shape doesn't mean you're a good surfer. You can get guys that are like buff, like, like can do whatever, you know what I mean? But you put them in the water, it's a different story. So you gotta kind of know your limitations when you're in the water as compared to on the land. It's totally different, you know? Should a beginner start with an EPS board or poly board? Poly. Until you learn the basics, I wouldn't suggest getting an um, a EPS board. More to worry about, more care, sun sensitive. You don't want to leave that thing baking in the sun. That's the worst, worst enemy for EPS boards. EPS um, cost is a lot more than a poly board. EPS is normally lighter, so the board will paddle faster, but not catch waves as easy. So usually like when you're catching a wave with a poly board, the board has more momentum, so it'll drop down easier. Whereas the EPS, because it's light and more buoyant, when you're catching the wave, if you stop paddling, the board will stop. Whereas like the poly board have more momentum and catch the wave easier. The EPS board sometimes gets stuck. What fin should a beginner get? So normally it's kind of based on your weight. So smaller guys would ride like smaller fins, bigger guys would ride bigger fins. Uh, twin fins have um, different fin altogether. Cause usually like if you're um, a bigger guy, you need like a, a bigger fin cause you're pushing harder on the fins. As compared to someone's lighter, if you have a big fin, you can't turn the thing cause the fin's too big. So usually lighter um, guys ride smaller fins, bigger guys ride bigger fins. Just normally it's like the fins should suit the design of the board. So usually like the rakier fin gives you more drive. The more straight up and down the fin, the looser it is, the less drive it is, but pivots quicker. So normally um, if you have a good salesperson, they'll suit you, suit the, um, put the right fin to suit the board. Least important thing to consider when buying a surfboard? Looks. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>